we are now talking about the gland, another gland that is pancreas. So here we will take structure as well as functions of pancreas. structure and functions of pancreas. We have already seen the position of pancreas. It is between the stomach and the duodenum. But that structure which we draw is to understand the connections of various ducts. So here we are actually going to see how this pancreas is placed. The stomach and this is the duodenal part. Pancreas has four parts in its structure and these parts are called head, neck, then the main part that is the body part and the tail part. When we simply draw it to understand the connections, we just draw it as a tubular structure. So here we are trying to see how this pancreas is placed. The head of pancreas is fitted into this. So this is the head part. Then comes the body and a narrower part that is the tail part or let me make the duodenal part little bent so that the structure becomes clear. So this is the head part of the pancreas. The neck is this smaller narrower depression part which we see. The main part is called the body and the long tubular structure is the tail part. So the head is actually fitted into this loop or bend of duodena and this stomach. So this is where the head is placed and then the remaining part. We made the connections. So if we make the connections again from here, the main pancreatic duct, that is duct of Virsang is going to come. The duct from liver is going to join here and the sphincter is going to be sphincter of Boyden. This would open into duodenum with that ampule of water and the sphincter of odai or sphincter of odai. So from here the ducts they join to form the main duct that is duct of Wilson and so on. But when we draw the connections we normally place it slightly away so that the tubes or the ducts become clear. So there are four parts. Pancreas has endocrine glands also and exocrine cells also. So pancreas is written as a heterocrine gland. Heterocrine gland. Heterocrine gland means it has exocrine part and it also has endocrine part. Exocrine part is going to produce pancreatic juice. And this exocrine part, they are known as akinal cells or they are also known as akina. Endocrine part produces hormones. And this endocrine part is known as islets of Langerhans. So if we draw the internal structure, the akinal cells, if we take the section, then the akinal cells, they are going to look like a cluster of cells. These cells are akinal cells. And these complete structures, they are called the pancreatic acne. 
all of them are going to pour the pancreatic juice and it will be collected by duct. So from here, there would be duct and all these ducts would join to form the main duct which will be the duct of Wilson. So this is how the achinal cells are. Then coming to islets of Langerhans, that is the endocrine part. These are achinal cells and this would be the pancreatic duct. So from here, the digestive juice, pancreatic juice would be produced and this pancreatic juice contains enzymes, the protein digesting, fat digesting and even lipid digesting enzymes. And this part is the endocrine part that is islets of Langerhans. Here we find that there are cells which are peripheral cells and inside this there are blood vessels also. So suppose if we draw a couple of blood vessels, So the, there are certain cells which are mainly arranged on the peripheral part. These peripheral cells, they are alpha cells or also known as A cells. And alpha cells, that is A cells, alpha or A cells, they produce and here we are talking about the endocrine part. That means they are going to produce the hormones. The hormone produced here is glucagon. And we will see the function also. The second category of cells, they are slightly inner. These cells, they are slightly on the inner side. These cells are known as beta cells or B cells. So the second category, beta or B cells, they produce insulin. And third category of cells, they are also in between these alpha cells as well as in the middle. And these cells are known as delta cells. Or D cells. Sometimes they are also called B cells. So third category, delta cells or D cells. These cells, they produce somatostatin. These somat somatostatins, they are inhibitory. So they are going to control the secretion from alpha and beta cells. The third category or rather the fourth category of cells, they are also present everywhere and they are called T cells or FF cells. FF cells or P cells. And they secrete pancreatic polypeptides. So if I write FF cell or P cell, that is the fourth category, they secrete pancreatic polypeptides. So there are four types of cells which are present in islets of Langerhans and this is the endocrine part. Exocrine part are uh, is made up of achinal cells. They are found in clusters. All of them, they pour the pancreatic juice which is taken by the ducts. Endocrine part, it pours its secretion directly into the blood because endocrine glands or cells are ductless cells or glands. Now, if we have to just uh, understand the function of glucagon and insulin, glucose is converted into glycogen and that is the extra glucose that we are talking of. This is under the control of insulin and that is why we see in some uh, people when insulin production is less then glucose, blood glucose level increases. 
the reverse reaction that is breakdown of glycogen to release glucose is under control of glucagon. That means these two hormones, they are antagonistic. Their action is opposite to each other on the same reaction. Somatostatin is produced by delta cells and this is either going to uh, inhibit or control the secretion from alpha and beta cells. And FF cells or P cells, they are going to secrete pancreatic polypeptides. So this is what is present inside the pancreas externally. Four parts, head which is fitted into that bend of duodenum, neck is a narrow region, the main part is the body and the tail part. So now I have pancreatic juice, here we have written so we will quickly write the pH also. Pancreatic juice is also basic and its pH is about 8 to 8.8. .8. That means bile is also basic and pancreatic juice is also basic and it contains all three types of enzymes that is amylases, proteases and lipases. So now with this we have understood the complete elementary canal or parts of it and the glands also that is liver, its functions, pancreas and its functions. So from the next section we will start with the process of digestion.